Hello. Now we are going to start um, several several videos about um, how to test the quality from the performance uh, point of view of the of the two web services we've been implementing: the get um, course executions and the create external course execution. Okay. So we are going to use two tools: JMeter and the Profiler. So I will start with JMeter and explain a little bit how we define the test plans for JMeter, okay? And um, so the first thing we're gonna find this code, we created a new directory here, JMeter, and inside this we defined LS JMeter, you define basically a directory for its functionality, and inside the functionality we'll get Basically, here you get four tests. So these JMX files are basically text files that contain scripts. And you have a CSV file that contains data, as I will describe you, okay? And basically, these, these tests are of two types. One is just a test that tests the feature, is these for instance, WS, Web Service, get external course executions test. And there's another one that tests the, 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 the load, okay? Where we simulate something like uh, 100 sim, uh, simultaneous users invoking the service, okay? And in this case, WS, Web Service, get external course executions, load test. And the same for the two create, so for the create web service. Okay, so good. So to, to do our work, basically you need to launch JMeter, okay? And launch the, the, the server, because actually you are going to, to interact directly with the server, okay? So you need to have that in the server, I'm gonna explain that to you, okay? So basically, I can use these. So this is a nice thing. If you want to, if you are in Linux and you want to get um, a, a command, you just do Control R, and then you 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 basically write a word, and it does a search in your X3. So look, I just do Control R. I've I've done run, and it it looks for this command run. So it's nice I don't to, 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 to write everything, okay? So now I just start, I'm starting the server. So at, at the same time that uh, the, the server is launched here, basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, launching the JMeter, okay? So this is JMeter and I'm gonna now, sh to, to, uh, I, I, now I'm going to, to show you the, the test plans, okay? So that you can, uh, learn a little bit. So I, I'm going to open a test plan. I'm, no, I'm going to go in, in a, from the simpler one to the most complex one. So I need, I'm, I want, I'm going to explain that to you. So I go to the JMeter directory, administration, and I'm going to pick these WS web service get external course execution test. Okay. It's loaded. Not yet. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's show it to you. So basically what you have here is a thread group, okay? And this thread group, you, you, you just simulate one user. So it's just one user that is going to invoke. And this user is doing what? First, it's gonna do the login, administrator login, okay? And what is that? Basically, it's doing a get in auto demo admin. What is the auto demo admin? It's basically the service where you do a login as a, a demo administrator, right? It's a service that you can find here. So I think that is in out. And in out service, we'll find this service here, okay? So basically it does, and what does this returns? This returns a token because now we are interacting and we are, are, are using JWT. So, and the, this JSON web token is necessary that, so after you, 
you authenticate, you use this token and send it again in, it, in each request. So how can I simulate this here? So look, I do this, this request, so I have a get here, and I do this. I will explain these variables later, but actually it's global variables that allows me, provide me some flexibility in terms of um, using this in different contexts. So I do this get, and this returns a value. Okay, it's going to return what? This DTO. And then what I'm going to do, I have here a JSON extractor. And in this JSON extractor, I'm going to store in this variable, token, what is in the token attribute of the DTO I receive. So I'm storing the token in my context. So that now, what I do next, I do authenticated requests. And in my authenticated request, I have these. So it's just a sample controller. In the authenticated request, I have an HTTP ad adder manager. And in this adder, I'm gonna, going to add to this manager the token. And it goes in the adder. So every request I'm going to do inside here, sends the token. So that's great. So I don't need to authenticate anymore. And I start interacting with the server, right? And then I have an HTTP request where I actually did do, do the HTTP. So I do the get and I invoke this path. Look, this is the path that I want to test. If I, if I go there, you will see that in administration, administration controller, I have this path. So a get, get mapping, this path is what you find here. Get this path. Good. And do, then I do something a little bit more. And what I do is to check that results are okay. So what is the result? So this service is going to return a DTO, which is an adjacent object now, because I'm just, our, outside the server. And I'm going to observe the values inside the DTO. So what I'm going to do, I create several asserts. So I'm going to receive an array that contains a single element. Why? Because this is the database. I'm running this with a database where after you just run the dump. And the dump creates a single course execution. So I access the first element in the JSON array and I see what is the course type, and the course type should be technical. And then I, I can do several verifications here, okay? And the final thing I have is that I have a result of the invocations and a, su a summary. So it's where I see the results, okay? Let's see, what the final thing that I need to explain is user-defined variables. What are user-defined variables? Look, server, local host port 8080. Why? Because in this request, I just use these variables. So if I have several requests, I use the same variables. And now if I, instead of testing in my machine, I want to test in the machine that is where the application is real deployed. So in this case, in a quiz institute or blah, 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 technical, I just change it here and I can run the tests there. Okay, so I can even test in the uh, real environment, okay? So, let's run the tests. Let's observe here what is going to happen here. If I run it there, what is going to do? Okay, is running and we have to wait because it's recording. Oh, okay, he has done the, the login administrator, okay, it's there. And then there's the HTTP request with success. To see, just to see that I'm sending the token, look at this request. Uh, request headers. Look at the request header this guy is sending. The, to the authorization token is here. That it was received from the server in the first step. Okay? As I usually say, this is nice. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you is 
Let's see if it fails. Suppose that I'm expecting a different name here. Okay? Actually. Oh, there, I'm going to show you something before I, I show this. In the summary report, you can observe that how long does it, the request took? It's 567, uh, 76 milliseconds and the throughput. Okay, so you can observe that about it. This is more relevant when you go study the load as I will see you, okay? Just in a, in a moment, okay? So, but let's run it again, okay? Now, in the context that uh, I'm gonna have uh, an error. So I run it again, and look, now it failed. And how does it fail? Oh, the third course name failed, why? Because value expected to be demo courses, but found demo course, okay? So that's the first example of you have of a feature test. So what I'm te testing, basically I'm testing the service to see that I, op I invoke the service and I get the results I want, okay? So it's not a load testing, it's just what I call here a feature testing, okay? So I'm testing the server and the service running. Good? Um, Okay, and I have the values here. Of course, now I have two invocations here because I didn't clean and I have two, two invocations there. Good? So, that, that is the first case. I can clean the information here, there. Oh, I'm gonna, gonna fix this. Okay. And I'm gonna open an, another script, another JMeter testing script to see something more complex, okay? And what you're gonna see that is more complex is the create test, okay? So it's again a feature test, so I'm gonna use a single user just to invoke the service. But now, there's something that is different. Look, what I'm, what I'm um, trying to do now, what I'm trying is that I'm going to create a course execution. And the problem is that if I do nothing at the end, this is going to be in the database. And if I run another test, maybe if I run this test twice, in the second time it says, well, the test fails because it already exists. So it's nice that at the end, you just delete the course execution. Well, so that's what I'm doing here. So I have this the same context. Then I have this login. It's just in the, like, in the same. So I do the logging, I extract the token, and I apply the token in the header manager, okay? Here in the header manager, I have something additional. Since I'm going to observe the results, I want that the content type is application JSON so that I can get the observe the, the, the result of the invocation, okay? Uh, let me see. No, no, it's not that the reason, sorry. This is because the data I'm going to send is in JSON, okay? Good. Because we already receive, receive a result on the other case. And now I have an HTTP request. It's similar, but now it's a post, and I send this object. Why do I send this object? Look, to see the difference. Here, in this service, I don't have arguments. So you just invoke, you don't have arguments. But in this, you send a request body when you are creating a, a course execution. And you need to send this request body, okay? So to send this request body, the way to send it is basically you need to send it as a JSON object. That's why you need to say that you have application JSON there. And here, what you go into define is the same. You define the server, the port, it's a post, and you define the path. And of course, you just say this. What I'm creating here, I'm creating a course execution type, external, which acronym is EC99 and is the first term, okay? And is of this course. When I invoke it, it's going to create it, right? So I'm gonna check here that what is returned is actually this acronym. Good. But at the end, when I finish, well, I want to delete it. So to delete it, that's the part that is new. You have a teardown thread group that runs at the end, where basically you create a JDBC connection. So you connect to the database. Look, 
you need to do this. Basically, you need to define here that is a Postgres SQL. Where, where is the server? Okay. And you need to put this driver. Hey, uh, there's a problem here that I have to solve is that at least in my machine, the last version of JMeter doesn't contain this driver. So I have to add the driver directly to the library of JMeter. Okay, that's not difficult. You do a search, we'll find out to do it. Okay, but be aware that maybe you get some er an error and the error is easy to understand because it says, well, no driver is there. Okay, or cannot open the driver. And then we'll see and you just download the driver and add it to the library. And then you have the username and the password of my database. Okay, and then I have a request. And what I'm doing in this request, I do it from course executions where acronym like this. And so, so that's nice. I run the test and at the end I delete what the entity I created. So I can run it twice, basically. So let's run it. Let's observe what is gonna happen here. I ran it there. Oh, it's already. So it ran. I send a request. Look, it's the request here. In the header, it's there. Okay. And at the end, it disappears. Why do I know that it disappears? It's deleted there. It's easy. Why? If I run it twice and if it's going to work, it was okay. So let's do it again. Well, good. It worked. So that's the first part of using JMeter. And good work.